Welcome to the Customer Services Portal demo. Welcome today. Uh, my name is Bob Beertema, Senior Product Manager for the Customer Service Portal. I'm responsible for the digital customer service experience. And today it's my pleasure to quickly introduce you to the demo. So the agenda for today is as following. We're first having a small introduction on how to get access. We briefly touch upon the customer benefits. We look at the home screen and the calendar and what you can do there. Of course, we dive into how to create a support request. We look into the cases and install product screens, how you can manage your contracts, uh, how you can find your end of life letters, and of course, how to find and download any documents. Then we'll also have a small part on the mobile light version, how you can access that and also work with that. Um, and before going there, I really want to point out the importance of the customer service portal and the key benefits. So as you may know, the customer services portal enables you with a self-service capability and basically helps you to manage your service KPIs. So it's an online platform where you can basically manage all your Philips fleet. And we also have a multi-vendor option uh, to include those multi-vendor systems. So you can manage your entire fleet across modalities and across departments. And we really try and aim to make your life easier by offering this self-service capability. So let me go to the key benefits. So first of all, you got 24 seven ability to manage your entire fleet in one place. It's all about service. So digital case creation and case registration is key here. And you can also easily add images or PDFs. You can of course plan your maintenance and your uh, and basically manage your planned visits. And we're also adding new dashboards and insights and you can actually analyze your surf performance with that. So to finalize this slide, you can also find all the case reports, manuals, contracts, warranties on all the different modalities. And it's just a great tool to be in control and to secure your system uptime anytime, anywhere. So let me go to the next slide. So today, Jesse Maxwell and Leslie Silva will be presenting the demo. Big thanks for that. So now I would like to hand it over to you, Leslie. Please go ahead. Thanks so much, Bob. So welcome everybody to the customer service portal demo. I will be displaying the desktop version of the customer service portal, and then you'll shortly see um, Jesse presenting the mobile version of the customer service portal. So the customer service portal is free to all of you Philips customers uh, because you're a valued Philips customer. We offer it for all 23 product modalities, including multi-vendor. We customize each profile according to what you'd like to see. So you tell us and we will customize your um, view. So you're able to raise your priority cases inside the customer service portal and also follow up on all your cases, such as obtaining your customer service reports and test and inspection results, seeing, seeing all the information live inside the customer service portal. So what we're currently looking at is the landing page. I'm gonna start on the upper left-hand corner, install base health. This is broken down according to the problem or problems you're experiencing at your hospital or hospitals. As I mentioned, service case updates. This is a rolling um, day calendar, and this will update throughout the whole month. And you will see whether you create, created a case via phone or web, all this information will be live at your fingertips. We have this nice go-to calendar, which I'm gonna click on in one moment. And it's going to show you all your um, various planned visits for an FSC to be on site. So the things that you'll see is from a field change order all the way down to a supplementary service. So I'm going to go ahead and click on one incident so we can take a look at what it looks like. So when I click on the um, case, you'll see the affected install product. You'll see the case number, what the subject is, who the engineer will be on site to support you, when you can expect them to arrive and how long the visit will take, which is really great. So if you do run into another issue, please bring it to the FSC's attention so you can get some support. So currently right now we're looking at it from the month view, 
if I go to the list year view, you'll see incidents um, throughout the whole month, which is really great. I'm gonna go back to the month view so I can show you how to export this calendar. So I'm gonna hover over a Saturday on the 4th of February, all the way down to the 25th, and I'm gonna export. So if you'd like to do an export of an offline version of the calendar, that's how you're able to do so. Now we're gonna hop back to the homepage, and now we're gonna talk about some links to help you utilize the customer service portal. We have two versions, as I mentioned. We have two interactive user manuals. We have the desktop version and the mobile version. They're completely interactive and help support you to utilize the customer service portal. The next link we have is a link to the e-store where you're able to order consumables and also track your purchase order. The next link we have is a link to the resource center where you're able to get your IFU, your information for use only and your addendum. The next link we have is a link to the education services. So please go ahead and browse our continuing education if you'd like some um, additional classes. Really great, please check it out. The next link we have is a link to in center. So if you need to do some troubleshooting on a device, this is a really great website. You're able to get a schematics of a device. Again, your IFU, your information for use only, a service manual, really great website to utilize. And lastly, we have the Philips product security. So you can go ahead and um, access the manufacturer's disclosure statements that we take your product security seriously. Now I'm gonna point over to the right-hand side, the lower right-hand side. We have a support page that we built for you. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And as you can see, we have five really short videos, two to three minutes long to help you utilize the customer service portal. So how to raise a ticket, how to navigate the customer service portal, how to download your customer facing documents such as your customer service report and test and inspection results, the calendar, and then also we have end of life. As I mentioned, we have the interactive user manual. We're looking at the desktop version. I'll take a pause for one moment. This is our nice QR code for the mobile light version of the customer service portal. And then we have some frequently asked questions potentially that could be answered in here. So you always have support all the time. Lastly, I'm gonna go back to the landing page. And if you, you can see contact customer service, if you hit this button, so this is actually a shared mailbox that goes to myself and Jesse Maxwell. If you have a question pertaining to your customer service portal, you need an install product added, you can't locate a customer service report, type in your message, hit next, and we'll know who sent it to us and we'll get back to you in a timely fashion. Okay, next I'd like to show you is cases. Okay, so I've already, um, so I'm gonna remove some of the filtering that I originally had on here so we can look at the overview of all the cases. So as I mentioned, you're gonna see all the information live, whether you've called in a ticket for a system down all the way down to a supplementary service. You can filter on the level of priority, the product modality, the status of a case. Okay, I'm gonna filter on complete. And then also you can pick the different type of event that you'd like to look at. So I'm gonna select preventative maintenance. Before we look at a completed case, we have this button closed before August 2nd of 2020. If you would like to get older corrective maintenance work orders, you can click on that button and obtain those customer facing documents. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just pick the first case so we can see what it looks like. Okay, so this is a pretty straightforward case. We can see that Darren was on site to support us. We have our customer facing documents right at your fingertips, your test and inspection results and customer service report. You're able to download both documents all in one stop shopping. Okay, and then all you have to do is hit the little carrot and hit show in folder and it'll show you where all your documents went for um, in that folder. And then case comments. This is very straightforward that the preventative maintenance device is returned to full use and um, now you're able to use it. Next, I'd like to show you of how to create a case. 
Okay, you can certainly utilize the global search button and type your install products. Or you can um, go through your install products page. So now we've, we've requested technical support. I've already selected my installed product that I would like to report a product malfunction on. You always have to answer the safety questions. I'm gonna determine my type of priority. I have my contact name and phone number. If you have a different callback phone number, please do so. We also have this little button here to change the contact. So say if you're raising a ticket on behalf of someone and you'd like that person to be notified, you can um, change the name. Also, we have the additional contacts in your dropdown. You're able to notify up to three people that you've raised a ticket inside the customer service portal. If you have a reference number for your own personal records, please include it. And now I'm gonna get to the subject of the case. So you want to be descriptive. You want to explain exactly what's going on with the device so the remote service engineer can troubleshoot your case relatively quickly. Okay, the great thing with the customer service portal, you're able to attach a photo, a video, or a test log, five megabytes per file, and you can upload as many files as you want. So I've completed my subject, my description. Now, lastly, we have patient health information. If you would like to include a medical record number or include any information, it's completely encrypted. Only the Phillips employee that's working on the case will see this information. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a case. Don't worry about um, writing down a case number. You're gonna get an automatic email notification that you've raised a ticket inside the customer service portal, which I'll share with you in one moment. Okay, so this is what the email notification looks like, which is really great. Now, as I mentioned, you're able to at attach a picture or a test log. So I'm gonna go ahead and upload a file. So I've now attached the, uh, a photo of my product malfunction, which is really great. Now I'm all done, and Philips is gonna get back to me in a timely fashion. So let's just take a view at what it looks like from opening up a case. So that's creating a ticket in less than 30 seconds of the customer service portal. So according to your time zone, every case is date stamped. You'll see when you opened up the case and what kind of activities that you've done. So you can see that I've opened up the case and I've uploaded a file. Now, if you'd like to add some additional information about the case, you learn something additional before that this goes to the remote service engineer, you can hit add additional information. So please select the dropdown of the type of information that you're looking to add. I'll just put demo and then if you would like to include another attachment, you can do so, and then also gives you another opportunity if you'd like to provide patient health information. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. How simple was that to create a ticket in less than 30 seconds? Okay, so next we're gonna move over to install products. Okay, what's really great about the install products is that you're able to customize the install products, meaning we have this button on the right-hand side that says update IP information. And as you can see under customize IP name, we've kind of, Jesse and I have renamed some install products, or maybe you call them site ID numbers, okay? You may not know the products by our Philips internal numbers. Maybe you know it by a unique ticketing system. How you would do that is you would hit update IP information select the install product that you would like to update. You can add a room, department number, and an inventory number. This is a great way to help you manage your own install products. So we're gonna go ahead and do a test. I'm gonna type in a keyword, and you can see that I put my name Leslie in here. This is how I know the device by. I'll see all the cases that I've raised, and here's the install product that I need to raise a ticket on. Really great to do. Um, to utilize that feature to help you manage your install products. Contracts and warranty, okay? 
So you're going to see future dated contracts and you're also going to see um, valid contracts. Okay, so we're going to take a look at um, a contract. So this is really important for you to see. And I'll explain why. What you'll see is any tickets that have been raised under this particular contract, you'll see the start date of the contract, the end date of the contract, the location, the install product that is covered under it. Your coverage details, this is extremely important for you. So you'll know what your response time and service window is. Now, if I selected an install product that had a PM, it would be spelled out in here. So this also includes service and spare parts and then what your priority is. But this is where you're able to locate your coverage details for each install product. We give you reporting capability. Okay, so we have some nice reports that you can run um, inside the customer service portal. So I'm gonna go ahead and run the closed out report. This gives you a nice overview of all your cases that have been closed out according to the product modality and the level of priority that you've raised inside the customer service portal. So as I scroll down, you'll see the install product, you'll see the case, the subject, the description, who raised the ticket, and how long it took Phillips to resolve the issue. You're able to export this to an Excel file, which I've already done so. So I'll share with, share with you in one second what that looks like. Okay. So that's probably a lot easier on the eyes to take a look at, but that's a really great way to close out your own personal work orders with Phillips. Okay, the next tab I'd like to show you is documents. This is a great way to pull bulk information if accreditation is coming in or if you just want to get a bulk of your customer service report in one stop shopping. So you're going to select one criteria in each tab and then run your report. Okay, so I'm just going to do location. I'll do the customer service report. I'd like to see preventative maintenance. I'm going to go ahead and select a couple locations in my tab. I'm going to determine the time frame that I'm looking for. So again, you can adjust it for whatever you're looking for. Okay, so I've done February 1st of 2021 to February 22nd of 2023. And then if you'd like to specify a product modality, you can do so. I'm just going to select everything. Okay, which is great. I received 15 documents, which is great. You're able to download um, 10 megabytes at one given time. And as you can see, my count is 3.43, which is great. This is a really great way to get a lot of information all at once. Okay, next thing I'd like to show you is um, under my profile. And this is another great feature that we have inside the customer service portal. So the purpose of showing you this is if you'd like to make any edits to your, your profile, you can do so. But the key is we have this little button end of life. So everyone's profile that has been created does not have this feature. If you'd like to turn on end of life, you'll just click this little box and then you'll determine what you would like for end of life, one month or up to 18 months um, for a product becoming end of life. So I'm going to select 12 months and save. Now I'm going to go ahead and run a report to see what products are becoming end of life. So what you'll see in here is December of 2023 and December of 2024. You're able to export this uh, report. But as you can see for December of 2023 and December of 2024, I have a few products that are becoming end of life. I'm just going to go ahead and click inside the report. So the key thing is if you do want to turn this on, you need to make sure you go to my profile. Otherwise, this button will not be here. Okay. So you'll see some key information for this product. You'll see the date the product was installed, the date the system is end of life and end of support. I'm going to go ahead and generate my end of life letter. So typically this would be something that you'd call into the call center. No need to do that. You can generate your own end of life letter inside the customer service portal. And this is what the letter looks like. 
So that's all I had for the desktop version. I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Jesse Maxwell so you can see the mobile light version of the customer service portal. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks so much, Leslie. Uh, very fantastic presentation, enjoyed that. Um, so we're going to show a pre-recorded video of the mobile version of the portal. Uh, the pre-recorded version will allow you to see what it looks like actually on a device because I recorded it from the device um, itself so that we could play the video here in, in the demo. So we'll go ahead and uh, take a look at that video. So we'll get into the mobile light version of the portal. First, we'll take our camera app and point it at the QR code on the portal landing page. Here, we'll have the option to save this bookmark. We'll do this really quickly. Just click on the background of the web page, and you'll get a box at the bottom. It looks like an arrow uh, pointing out of a box at the bottom. Let's click on that. And then we'll do add to home screen and then press add. And there it is. We have added the bookmark to our desktop, our desktop on our phone, home screen. So what they call it. All right. So we'll click that. And then you'll notice that it does save the credentials. So once you log in the first time, you'll be able to access your credentials. Uh, you previously logged in. The phone will allow you to store them. It does your face ID and then logs you in. Now we are inside the mobile light version of the portal. Notice here that there are four buttons. This is a light version of the portal. So we just limit it to the, you know, the function of creating cases, looking at our cases, browsing install products, and of course, uh, contacting us if you need to. So first thing we'll do is we'll create a case. So we'll tap that button and we'll do technical clinical support, initiate, We'll select an IP, meaning install product. Here you could filter your list if you like to select a very specific product if you want to just uh, narrow down your list. Now I'm, I'm starting the case. I'm on screen one of three. I have to answer the safety question. So no user or patient was harmed. We'll tap next. We'll select a priority. And we're going to leave it on technical service. And we're not gonna change the contact person and we're gonna leave the phone number same as what's listed above. You do have the option to add additional contacts and you can put in your own reference number here. Here you put in a subject line, very brief. And then here's where you get more verbose and just really let us know what's going on with the equipment so that we can help you. Field below is for patient health information. Uh, you'd only want to use this if absolutely necessary to uh, troubleshoot the case. Again, this information is encrypted when sent to Philips and it's only going to be accessible by the authorized Philips personnel. And it will not be visible by anybody that has access to the uh, portal or even the person who put it in. So this is a production version of, that I'm logged into right now. So if I hit create case, I would get somebody from Philips calling me in a few minutes. I don't want that. So I am not going to create the case. We'll use our imagination. I just did that. And what it would do is take you to the cases list. Here on the cases list, it, the case that you just created would be the first case listed. The cases list can be filtered by new or in progress cases or completed cases. And you can also flip the switch to view just the cases that you created. You can select from the different event types to filter and also priorities if you like. For any case that is in new or in progress status, you can tap into the case and you can add case activities or upload attachments. So here in the case view, there's a, this kind of paper clip on the upper right hand corner. If you tap that, then you can add case activity or upload attachments. You have to accept these terms, and then you get the option to upload files. And we'll take anything up to five megabytes, except for executable files, 
and archive files. Back here on the home screen, you can see that we've covered creating cases and viewing the case list, which we just did. And now we'll look at install products. So the install products list can also be filtered, much like it did when we created a case. So we can put in our own, um, you know, if we have a custom IP name, we can put that in here. Or if we wanted to filter by a specific type of equipment, say ultrasound, we could just start typing the word ultrasound, and it'll use that keyword search and just pull up install products that are ultrasound. And then we could select one that we would perhaps want to raise a case on. We'll be looking at that install products screen. We could see if there's any cases open. If there is, we could then tap into those cases if we want to see that. And then if we want to create a case, we could just do this thing in the upper right-hand corner that looks like a document with a plus. And then we could say we want technical or clinical support. And then again, we're on screen one of three creating a case. So last button here is the contact us button. This is to reach out to the portal team to, you know, if you have anything specific that you need to see in the portal that you're not seeing, you can hit this contact customer service button and you can just let us know. Upper right hand corner, you also have the option for my profile. So if you need to update a phone number, you can do that in here. And if you wanna turn on or off your end of life subscri subscription, you can also do that here. And that is all for the mobile version of the portal. All right. So we've watched that video about the mobile version of the portal. Hopefully everybody finds that useful. And so in, in closing the demo out today, we would just want to go over some information on if you're having any trouble accessing the portal, uh, you can email to csp underscore requests at phillips.com. Uh, that will come to the portal support team, or if you're U.S., you can dial 800-722-9377. We also have self-service options for resetting your password. If you go to customerservices.phillips.com, it'll take you to a link where you can, it's the login page, and you can say, I forgot your password. And then if you do not have access yet, you can actually go to phillips.com forward slash customer dash services dash portal. And that is the landing page for the portal. And on our landing page, we do have, uh, really quickly, I will share my screen and show you how you can request access. So if you don't have access already, you can come here to request access, tap that button. You have to confirm that you're a healthcare professional. You say request access. And here's a form that you would fill out. You fill in your contact details here. You put in your organization name, specialty, anything with a star is a mandatory field. And most importantly, here is probably the one that we're really concerned with is we need to know what you need to see in the portal. So give us a install product number, a site ID, tech, uh, tech ID, even, um, you know, if you put a contract number in here, uh, sometimes we, we, don't, we don't see that a lot. But if you have a contract number, you want us to pull up everything on that contract put the contract number in here and, and tell us down below, hey, this is a contract number uh, so that we don't think it's actually a product number because there's kind of two different categories of things to look up. But uh, if you have, you can also include the name of your account manager if we need to reach out to them to kind of uh, determine what you should be seeing in your view, we can also do that. And then you can click here to opt in for communication and then you hit submit and then we get the request in our queue and then we really strive hard to create portal accounts typically within 48 hours is our kind of uh, turnaround time that we, tr we aim for. Again, that's all we have for the demo today. I'll leave you with this slide uh, so that you can see how to get a hold of us if you're having any is issues with access, how to reset your password, and then again, you know, if you don't have access, what that link is to then uh, request access if you would like access. And that's it. Thank you so much for joining us today.